Hello, this is Michael Jillian, and today I'll be showing you how to play all of your old games on a Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer in 2022. You can also do it in 2021 or 2023. Either way, it's fine. But I will show you how I got all my games to work. Uh, and I had binders and binders of game, and I got most of them to work on my computer. Now, it will take a lot of patience, but there are very old games, and many issues have, you know, arose, and since all the games were created for different systems, Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 98, 95, 2000. We have to have different methods of playing each game. So therefore, we need to taste each one with the computer that it probably came out on, meaning on the software that it came out on. So if you take a look right here, I will show you the different Windows releases and the platform that they were released on in the year. So this is going to be very helpful in helping you decide how you should test your games. Uh, so let's get started. Now you'll obviously need a computer to test all of your games on. So what you can do is you can get yourself a dedicated retro gaming computer and you can test all your games on it. Uh, however, once you install a game or you install many games, it st might start getting sluggish, especially if those games are older and they are causing some bug. So what you would like to do maybe is get a second hard drive and just install it on there and either you can keep on resetting your computer you can also do a restore point so I'll show you how to reset your computer you can just reset it every few days that you uh, every few games that you install so you just hit get started and you start resetting it okay that's one option or you can use a restore point create a restore point so you have here create a restore point and call this original state or whatever so that way you can restore to it every time your computer starts getting buggy. You could also use something called Macrium Reflect, which I have used in the past. And this is basically, it images your computer and you could re-image re your computer to whatever image you backed up. So you create an image, it's like 25 gigabytes for a computer that's pretty much in its new state. It'll be 25 gigabytes and you could also create a flash drive in order to um, boot from and install it. If this all sounds complicated to you, just use your regular computer and keep on uninstalling games. Best way to uninstall games is by going to Control Panel and going to Uninstall Game. So let's find that. It was easier for me to find it when I went by category and you click Uninstall Game and here are all the games that I have installed and you can just uninstall anything just like this. So for example, if you wanted to uninstall StarCraft, you just go right here and click Uninstall. So let's get into it. The best option that I found to test games are is a virtual uh, Windows 10, a virtual machine. So I install Windows 10. You can just install the ISO from Microsoft and you can easily install it in, um, in Oracle VirtualBox. You will need Oracle VirtualBox later on in this tutorial to help you set up older games. So it might be a good idea for you to set it up earlier. So the first thing you'd want to do when you want to try a new game is I have a few games here, really old games, and I do have many, many games that I want to test. For example, all of these CDs that I have here, MRK, Need for Speed, Amazon Trail, Tomb Raider, and Hardball 6, they do not work on Windows 10, and you need to install it in a special way in order for it to work. So, um, I will start with some other games that I have, but those games are games examples of games that just don't work on Windows 10. Here, Dr. Riptide, DR Rip. And if you click over here, Windows will say, I just can't run you. And if you go to Duke 2, and you type in Nukem 2, which is the application, as you can see, it's the application file right here, Windows will say, you cannot be run. Duke 3D, Duke 3D, and Duke 3D. Nope, can't run it. Setup, nope. And the other setup, Windows is just like, I'm not having this. So what we need to do is figure out when Duke Nukem came out. So let's take a look here. And if you search for Duke Nukem and Archive, it has a lot of information about every game. And you can actually play Duke Nukem right here uh, in the Archive. Uh, but it gives you information about the game. And as you can see, it was made in 1996 and it actually says what platform it was created for, DOS. And if you look over here at Dr. Riptide, and chances are Duke Nukem 2 will also be older than 1996 and probably also runs in DOS. In Search of Dr. Riptide, made in 1994, and the software library of MS-DOS. So um, I will not tell you where you can download these games um, illegally. I do not advocate for piracy. However, um, if you own the game, I'm pretty sure you are allowed to download it. Uh, but just check in with your local laws. 
so that way you are not violating any uh, pirating uh, problems, legality issues. Uh, but you can actually play it here for free. So you can uh, get you can get your game, your copy of the game, and your copy of the game should look like this, right? Just have a bunch of files in it, and uh, let's figure out how to play this game. So first, what you want to do is you want to go to DOSBox. You just search for DOSBox, and right here, here will be the DOSBox website. You go to the latest version. You can download it. I already downloaded my copy, and you also want to go and download another piece of software. And you can go and download Daemon Tools. You can find it on this website right here, and click download. It's free, but it has ads. Just letting you know, and you have to be careful when installing it. I will show you how to install it. Okay, so first let's install DOSBox because that's pretty easy. You just click it. You want to install it? Yes, no problem. Next, next, next install. There we go, all done. Daemon Tools, you want to install as well. Here's how you install Daemon Tools. Like yes, now it's going to give you some issues and you want to you want to have internet connection when you install this. Okay? Because um it actually downloads it. You press free license, configure setup. You don't want to allow them to um to send anonymous data, so make sure you uncheck this and I uncheck all the boxes except for bin queue files, which are the only ones that I found that we really need it for. However, you can use daemon tools with other files. You just have to right click and you know, use with daemon tools. This is just associated files. So agree and continue next and make sure this is a bright VPN this is adware you don't want this just click decline and it will install it I'm gonna pause until after the installation so Damien Tools Lite has finished uh, installing we could just close it now and now we want to make sure that DOSBox is working well so let's find DOSBox and make sure it's working and as you can see DOSBox is working and the reason why I know that these games, these three games that I had, will work in DOSBox is because it actually shows an archive. It working on DOSBox. If you click right here and right here, you see that it's actually working through DOSBox, and this is also working through DOSBox. So, as well as right here, you can see these are all DOS, and DOS is the easiest to run. DOSBox is the easiest program to run on Windows 10, so we're going to start with that because we know that it's 1996 and it was 1994. We're going to try DOSBox. Now the first thing you need to do for DOSBox is let's close everything and let's go to local drive C. Okay, so you want to go to the C drive right here. It's C. So you go into local PC. You just create a folder called DOS, just all lowercase DOS. Okay, and then you want to add your games into it. So I added my three games into it, Dr. Reptile, Duke 2, and Duke 3D. And once you have that, then you can open DOSBox. And I have DOSBox open. It opens two uh, boxes. You can focus on this one. Now we want to set the mount drive to drive Z to C DOS. And that sounds a little complicated, but all you have to do really is just type this command. And the command is as follows. Really, you could just fo follow the instructions that I wrote out here. I will type it in for you. So that way you can see as well. Again, you always want to use the shortest file names when it comes to DOS because over eight characters, it'll give you problems. So as you can see, almost everything here is at least, you know, less than eight. And we're going to have to type it out. So we want it to be as easy as po possible. So what you want to do is type in command mount C, C dash. Mount C, C DOS. Okay. And now C is mounted as the local directory. And then you switch to C by click by typing C, and now you're in C. And if I type in dir, dir basically tells me what's in the folder. We see my three files here. Now, if this is complicated to you, that's fine. You don't even have to know what you're doing. All you have to do is type in this command, this command, and then the next command will be to you're in you're in your C drive. Just type in CD and into whatever folder you want. So if you want to play Doctor Riptide, type in Doctor Rip, and you're in that folder, right? That's pretty simple. CD, change directories into Dr. Rip. You just have to type that. And once you're in Dr. Rip, how do we play the game? We want to click the application. So instead of clicking it like this, when you're typing things in, you just type it in. And you're basically running Dr. Rip Tide. Now, there's a bunch of different. Oh, there we go. Some music. I'm not sure if you can hear this. We can start the game.
Alright, I'm playing. Okay, there we go. Let's see that it works. And if we go down over here, we can click game. And here is a list of hotkeys that you can use in order to, you know, close DOS box. The most important one I think is control F9 together and you'll basically close DOS box and control F10 is to release the mouse because DOS box is an emulator and will capture your mouse in order so that you can play the game. But once you want to let release your mouse, you can just click control F10 and you can actually close it. There's also alt enter is switch to full screen and back and everything else is also great. But, um, those are the main ones that you will need to know for DOSBox. Okay, now let's try to play another game with DOSBox. So we go and open DOSBox one more time. We'll do the same thing. I'll just do it quickly. And I just wrote out these commands one more time. I wrote the same commands I did last time and I am in the folder Duke2. See, I changed to Duke2 and then I hit Duke2 and then you press enter. Once you press enter, it'll basically, oops, nuke him to. I bet. Nuke him to. Once I hit enter, then when I type it correctly, it will work. There we go. And okay, great. It's working. And works no problem. Now if I hit control C, it, this one doesn't really capture your mouse because it's just a keyboard game. But if I hit alt enter, it's going to do full screen. It might look weird from the capturing end of things, but there we go. Um, so yeah, it'll look a little weird, but it's fine. Uh, it will look normal when you're not in a virtual machine because the virtual machine is getting mixed up, but that's basically it. Um, and then you can just, you can just exit it just by clicking exit as well. Now let's try Duke Nukem 3D. And again, um, very simply just click the, uh, type in the commands. This is mounting the DOS folder. This is, um, going into the DOS folder, going into C drive, which is a DOS folder, and then switching to Duke 3D, and then switching again to Duke 3D, and then now we just type in Duke 3D. You could also do the setup, but it's basically already set up. So now it's gonna play, and I have to figure out how to fast forward. I don't know how to do that yet. Okay, and there we go, we're in the game. As you can see, I am running around. I don't really know how to play so well yet, but uh, whatever. Point is, is that it definitely does work. And let us move on to the next one. Control F9, and we're basically shut it down. And now let's figure out how to play DOS games that are actually CD games. Now, of course, you want to always make sure that you're getting, you know, the the right year and making sure that it's DOS. But if you do know that it's DOS, and we want to test that it's DOS. Um, the way to check is obviously just check the year, 1996. That is a year that it's very possible to be a DOS game and it needs a CD to run. This game, Maximum Roadkill, needs a CD to run. And this other game, Warcraft, Tides of Darkness, made by Blizzard, also definitely needs a CD to run. And will not run on Windows 10 Plane. The thing is, is that we have to get a CD, uh, you have to get DOSBox to register the CD. So how to do that? Okay, let's do it. First off, here are the folders, uh, MRK, here's the folder, and here's the sound folder, MRK, obviously when you run it, yeah, it will not work. Okay, let's try Warcraft, War, this is the uh, editor, and this is something else, but the setup right here, or War2 is the application, I believe, it can't run. Okay, so let's um, put it into the DOS folder, and of course you want to make them short, obviously, maximum roadkill, War2 uh, re-release. So uh, let's let's show you how to do that. Um, okay, if you do have CDs and you're trying to make them digital, there are ways to do it. Um, if you see right here, there are. This is called Ninight. Ninight is basically an installer application. You can choose all these, any of these applications, and it will download an installer for you and just install it for you. You don't have to click next or anything, and it runs each one at a time. It is very good. So if you want to turn your um, turn your CDs into um, digital copies of CDs, uh, what I use sometimes is uh, I will look for it and I will tell you. Okay, I will either use Infra Recorder, CD Burner XP, or I will use Image Burn. 
although they don't make bin queue files, some uh, some games don't need to be bin queue. Some of them do. I don't know exactly how to make bin queue files. I haven't figured it out yet how to make them from CDs, but these will make um, ISO files, which also may work. So you can definitely try that. Um, if you download something from here and you're not sure if it is safe, you can always just drop it in virus total and virus total will tell you if it's safe if you ever download anything from the internet and you want to check if it's safe you can always uh, put the file here or use a url or the search and you'll be able to figure out if this um, if it is safe it uses a whole uh, bunch of different tools to check if things are safe for example if i were to put um, a, a media creation tool or j downloader for that matter into virus total it tells me that Panda found one thing, but all in all it's good, and there are a lot of, uh, actually there aren't anyone in the community that says it's good, but for example, the uh, distributed by Microsoft, you see it's all safe. So usually one hit won't mean anything, but multiple will. So if you want to use 9 to download uh, to download your um, CD rippers, you can, to make everything digital, so that way you can run it without having the CD. But if you do have the CD, that works too and I'll show you how to do each one of them. How to run with CD, with an actual CD or with a digital CD. Here is my guide on how to run CDs, um, if you wanna look at it quickly, but I'll basically be explaining this. So what you have to do is first you have to um, mount the C drive in DOSBox like you norm do normally, so let's open DOSBox. And this is all without the customization to automate it and I'll teach you how to autom automate, uh, auto make it automatic basically. Um, so first you want to type in the original stuff that we taught you. Okay, we mounted C as C DOS. Now this is the part where you put your ac well, well, where you will put your actual CD in. If you have a CD, if you don't have a CD, this is the part where you have a digital CD. Um, you need to have either a digital CD or an actual CD. Here I have the MRK CD in the drive, but if you don't have the actual MRK CD, <coughs> then you'll have to put in a, the digital CD. So this is how you put in the digital CD. You will go to wherever this digital CD is stored. I have it right here. This is the CD. It comes in bin queue file format. And you just, you can just uh, go down here to daemon tools. Oops, right here, to daemon tools that you installed. Or you could just click, um, click it because it's already associated. And now it will just be, um, it will be mounted, or it should be mounted at least. And it shows up as a BD-ROM, which is a uh, it's a, a Blu-ray disc. So it's basically a digital CD, and it mounts it for you. So now we need to mount it in um, we need to mount it in DOSBox. So let's just go back and see what we did. We basically just put the CD into the CD drive, whether it was a physical CD or an actual CD and now we need to get DOSBox to see the CD. So um, really not that complicated, you just have to put in a command. I haven't found any other program that's able to mount bin queue files except for daemon tools, but Windows itself can mount ISO files and there are a few other programs that had been able to mount bin queue files and other formats but not the ones that I needed. So therefore daemon tools has worked out really well for me. Now you put in your mount command for the CD-ROM, so my CD-ROM is E, MRK is E, so you put an E and then you just write it like this. Okay, so what you gotta do to play the CD is first you gotta mount DOS like normal, then you have to mount the CD, this is the command for mounting the CD. Once, you're mount, once you mount the CD, then you have to go into the CD, and let's go into the CD ourselves. So this is basically what you're doing, you go in there, and then you have to type install. For most games it will be something like install or, you know, run or something like that and then once you do that it will install okay here we go and then you follow the prompt in order to install you press enter choose a letter to install in C which is basically C DOS CD-ROM E if you're sure you want to install yes you put the Y button and then it starts installation go ahead with install Y and then it's going to give you all these options auto detect um, all these things and you just detect it Okay. Okay. So now we are in here. We HMI module Alpha Humana on approach to space station Mercury. Okay, so it's tested and it's working. So now we click OK. And usually you want to use the sound blaster. 
because that's like the it's it's basically a, a, vid, a sound card and almost all of them work with sound blaster here and you can just click okay it works um, it usually just works right out of the bat and now you're in CMRK so if you look over here I'm gonna click control F10 so that we can get our mouse back go get our mouse back and if you go into the DOS folder you'll see it made a folder for you called MRK and if you just type in MRK now it should just work and it does work okay so first you gotta install it from the CD and then it'll work okay and of course you can make it full screen by clicking alt enter but I'm in, I'm in a VM so it's giving me problems when I do that it just the VM bugs out but uh, it is working and as you can see I can start a game and usually the mouse works very well but I think because I am using a VM it is giving me issues but I can start the race and I can actually work how to play this game I don't remember how to play this game so well but whatever so, there we go okay so that's uh, that's how to start this game up and I just hit a control F9 and now it's gone now we're going to install Warcraft Tides of Darkness. Okay, so the way you want to do this is first of all open DOSBox and Daemon Tools. So first you go into the folder of Warcraft and you see that Warcraft 2 and you see that it's been Q files like last time. So you go to drives and you do quick mount. You can do a quick mount <coughs> and you're in maximum roadkill. You go back to the folder downloads, go to Warcraft Tides of Darkness and you um, put in the binq files if you have an actual CD that's even easier you can literally just put the CD into your computer and then the goal is to have a CD in here that says Warcraft 2 if you put in an actual CD one that it would be in the actual CD drive but this is a digital virtual drive so now let's click it and now it actually runs um, and if you press install Warcraft you'll see the program doesn't even work um, demo you can't you can't even see the demo you can't you can't do anything it just runs the original you know player and even if you got in it would say that the CD is missing it always does that so we have to go back and do our regular stuff mount DOS okay you've mounted DOS but you're not in it now you want to mount a CD of Warcraft so right here it's E you put in this command and it should mount it now if you have E mounted you could go into E and now we are inside of this CD so if you open it, we're we're basically right here in in um in here. We're we're basically in the same place. So now we have to install it. So I think you just click hit install. Okay, preparing to install Warcraft 2, and you basically go through the install process. Basically, click continue a bunch of times. Okay, and now I'm gonna continue installing. Sorry, it's very annoying with the um with the virtual machine to actually do this but I'm doing my best. And with just about every game like I spoke about, you do want to um, just click OK. Sound Blaster is good. <clears throat> I just keep on clicking OK until it works. No, I, don't, I, don't have, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. OK, great. Well, let, me, let me continue. Very good. So now type War 2 to play Warcraft 2. Now first I want to show you, if I hit Control F10, I get my mouse back and I can go to the DOS folder over here I hope you can see and you see War 2 and it basically made a folder War 2 and basically we're just typing War 2 to run it this thing and of course it doesn't work on Windows but it will work here easy peasy and of course alt enter to make it full screen okay and this was one of my favorite games so new campaign or campaign, you could literally just play the game. The Horde is preparing to okay. launch an assault against the mainland of Lordaeron. Orgrim Doomhammer, war chief of the Orcish Hordes and ruler of the Blackrock Clan, has ordered you to a. So now in the future, when you want to run Warcraft 2, make sure it is in the CD-ROM, and you could easily check that by going into your folders into uh, this PC. If it's mounted here, you just do the same thing: mount C. And you do that. Oops. Stop. Okay. Then you go mount E. 
B dash T CD ROM and then you could switch to C and then you could CD WR2. You're basically going into WR2 and WR2. Okay. I am not in WR2. What did I do wrong? CD. Let's go to DOS and see why it didn't go into WR2. WR2. Okay, I figured out the problem. It was my original mistake. Okay. Now it works. There we go. And it will work. It will play. Okay, great. Now let me show you what happens if I try to um, play chip challenge. Now I'll just type chips because we want it to be short. Okay. And spoiler, it's not going to work because chips is actually a Windows game. Chip challenge is a Windows game. So if I do the all the shenanigans and you see the application is called chips right here and I try to run it, what's it going to say? Illegal command. Right? Because I'm not actually in C drive. Hold on. And now I run it, what's it going to say? Requires Microsoft Windows. Even though this game is actually made in, um, if you look over here, Control Z, it was made in 1990. Um, so it, like, it was made kind of in the DOS era. But since it is not a, it's a Microsoft program, it does not work in DOS. So what do we do to play that game? Well, that's for next. Right now I'm going to teach you how to customize, um, how to customize uh, DOSBox. Okay, so you want to customize DOSBox. Here's how to do it. First, you go to DOSBox. It's right here. Start menu, DOSBox. And if you go over here, you see the manual. The manual actually has a ton of information. Um, here are all the different things that you could put in. It's really great. And this will teach you a lot of um, a lot of tips about DOSBox. But if you want to customize uh, the basics, here's how to do it. You go to DOSBox, and here's something called DOSBox options. So. Okay, file, and then you do save as. Now, when you go to save as, you'll find this is the, this is how to find this file. So let's go find this file. You could just copy this whole thing and put it into a search bar. I'm going to put it into a search bar of Windows Explorer. And this is the file right here. Now, if you want to have an easier time finding it, you could just go to this PC users Michael Jillian local is one of the options here that I will find okay it's actually an app data so we go to app data and it's a hidden it's a hidden file so you gotta go to view hidden files app data local and here you see it says a bunch of uh, different folders you go to DOSBox. here's the configuration file you need to copy this configuration file into DOS okay now so no, normally when you open DOSBox, this is the screen that you're going to get, basically a blank screen. So let's make a copy of this sh of this shortcut of DOSBox, and then we're going to change the name of it to Riptide Game. Okay, so now we have this, and now we're going to make a copy of this configuration file, and we're going to call it drrrip. So Dr. Riptide, same as this file right here, same as Dr. Riptide, because we're making a shortcut for it, we're basically trying to customize it. And if you go into the file and you want to edit some things, you can go to full screen. You can make it full screen at startup. True. That's one thing you can do. And if you want to just um, make it very quick to just go into the game and just hit that, uh, hit that shortcut and it goes right into the game, it says over here, Lines in this section will be run at startup. So here's what you can add. Mount C DOS, C, Dr. Riptide, uh, CD Dr. Rip, and Riptide. That's basically what you would do when you normally start up uh, DOSBox. You would just go to this folder and click it from, you know, not click it, uh, go into it from DOSBox. So let's save it. Okay. But now we have to point this shortcut to Dr. Riptide. So you go to properties, you have that. And instead of taking, instead of deleting the whole thing, you just want to delete the user part, and then you want to type in C, and then DOS, and then Riptide. Uh, what was it called? 
dr rip dot config. Okay. And then you click okay. And then it will run this configuration file for dr riptide. So let's see how it goes. And there we go. It's working. Now of course the full screen is weird because it's a virtual box like I like I said many times. But it's definitely working. Um, and you hit start. Okay, great, it's working. And we press Control F9 to go out of the game. And there we go. Um, it worked. So now you want to take this file and put it to into your. I mean, I made a folder called DOS Games where I'm going to copy this into. And now we could easily just replicate that by copying this Dr. Rip, and we could call this one Duke 3D. Right? Because we want it to match this. We want it to match this. You have to make sure you like tap it all. Duke 3D. And we're going to copy this to also say. And we can write whatever we want here. Duke Nukin 3D DOS game 1996. So, um, and then we have to edit it, obviously. So let's change it to properties. And we're going to want to change this from Dr. Rip. Duke, three, oh, three, three. Okay, and now it's that easy to just create the shortcuts. We have to just obviously change this. I don't like that it goes on full screen. I just wanted to show you how it works. So I'm going to change this back to false. Okay, and we have to change the configuration to CD Dr. Rip. Instead, it's going to be Duke 3D. Really, it's not case sensitive, so you could just put. Um, and if you remember, Duke 3D actually had two folders that it was in. So if we go to the DOS folder right here, see Duke 3D is in a folder called Duke 3D, and so and then it's called Duke 3D. So we just have to copy this and paste it, and there we go. This should work, I hope. All right, let's see. Uh, where'd I go? DOS games. Duke Nukem 3D. I really do hope it works. All right, there we go. So you could just make endless copies of these shortcuts and these games in order to play it, and you could change the configuration settings every time. So right now you just have two, but you can do it for Nukem 2 and for you know whatever else you want to do. Now, if you want to do it for a CD game, um, that's the same procedure, except you just have to, you have to be a little bit creative. Um, you have to pick a drive letter because if you're asking it to mount a drive letter every time, you have to pick a drive letter. So I chose M for Michael. So for example, if I went to here, um, and I wanted a, I wanted to mount Warcraft 2. So add drive. You'd have to make it the M drive. If you want to just pick one drive, and M is pretty good because most computers don't have enough drives to go until M. Um, if you go to my computer, you'll see this PC. You'll see like it has three drives, and it usually starts at C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. So M is already pretty far down. So I think M is a pretty good one. You add the drive, and now M is here too. M is here as well. M is there. Okay, there we go. And now we could put something in the M drive. What do we want to put on? In we could put in Tides of Darkness. Okay. So now that um, Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness is in as, okay, we put it in as the wrong one. Let's do this again. Let's delete this. Remove. Just remove it. I'll put it in the wrong one. We could put Tides of Darkness. There we go. It's in. Um, now that it's in, we can create a, now we have to make a copy of, let's make a copy of Duke 3D and call it, this is the configuration file. We call it Work for word two. Okay, word two. Yeah, that could work. Okay, word two. Because that's what it's called up there. And I'll, I'll make it capital so it matches. Okay, I have to be a little more creative because obviously we can't um, can't leave this here. So if you remember, if we were in the DOS folder, we go to word two. It's just called word two. So cd word two. Oops. Okay, and then we could take this out because it's not in a second folder. We could just call it Word 2. Okay, 
and we also have to mount we have to uh, change something we just have to mount um, M and M dash this okay hopefully that's good okay file save okay now we have to go back to here and go to DOS uh, DOS games and we're going to go to do okay copy it and we're going to call this wordcraft 2 and now we have to point to this configuration file that we made the war 2 configuration file so we just have the properties um, you have to change it to were two dot configuration dot com apply okay now since it's pointed at the M drive this has got to be in the M drive if it's not here if there's if this Warcraft 2 is not here it won't work because as you can see it's gonna point to the M drive see it's mounted to CDM okay it'll totally work and won't give you any problems if the CD is not in because it is giving you the problem. So now we gotta figure out what that problem is. Also here is a written version of customization of DOSBox to automate it so that you can just click on the shortcut. The end result kind of looks something like this where you basically have shortcuts to all of your DOS games and these are the CDs and obviously you have to mount the CD so I put all the CDs in here so that they're easier accessed. There are also some with some special instructions, um, and I obviously put the instructions in here, like some cheats and some trainers and stuff like that, and you'd actually have to do a little bit of a different configuration in order for it to work, but all of them do work after a little bit of tinkering around. Okay, so now we're going to work on automation of CDs, and I'm going to start with Warcraft 2 because it's actually probably the hardest one because Blizzard worked really hard on the DRM to make sure that the CD has to be in the CD-ROM in order for it to work. So we want it to show up as M because that's the one we're automating it to because we want to run a script for M and I'll show you how to do that. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. First step is get Warcraft Tides of Darkness as M. So we go over here and we can open Daemon Tools and first we create a drive, add drive and we could add M, okay? I already added M, so it's right here and it's empty. So let's put in StarCraft 2. So let's go to all games, um, we go to dot CDs, CDs, Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness, the Q file, and now the Q file is in. Okay, great. That is in. Now let's go to um, this PC. And we'll go to DOS 2. Okay. And what we want to do is uh, copy our config file. So here's our config file. Label it War 2 and put it in our DOS folder. Okay, I know this is a different DOS folder than I showed before, but uh, my virtual machine went bad, so I'm just using it here. And we're gonna create this config file, um, and we're just going to run, we're going to install the CD again with DOSBox. So let's just open a fresh uh, fresh DOSBox um, opening, and we're gonna install it. Uh, so let's go to um, all games. We're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna go just go to regular DOS box. I'm going to just open a regular config file, a regular DOS box. Okay, this is just the basic no config file, and we're going to go through the motions of installing uh, Warcraft 2. Okay, so this is our folder here, DOS 2, and now I'm mounting the CD ROM, the MCD ROM, and now the CD ROM is mounted, and now we're going to switch to the CD, and we're going to hit install because, as you can see, in our CD ROM, if you open it, the, this is installed right here, so we're just going to install that. There we go, preparing to install, and now I'm going to install it. Okay, installation was successful. As you can see here, I was able to install it. Okay, now we are going to just run it normally. Okay, and it should work normally. <laughs> Yeah, 
That's the horde is preparing to launch. Okay. Now we like to automate it. So you get the config file, you copy it, you label it War 2. Okay? And I have the full screen on this time. Okay? Full screen on. True, right here. And we're going to put this in. Okay? Mount C DOS. Uh, well, actually, we have to make it DOS 2. And Mount C. CD ROM, the M for the CD ROM, and CD War 2 and War 2. So now it's going to check M, which is right here. M. This is M. And it's going to mount it and save. And now let's go back. And we're going to DOS CDs. And we're going to uh, take a blink CD. Okay. And we're going to copy it to right here. So that way you can see what I'm doing. You go to properties. And we have to um, switch this to DOS2 because it's in the folder DOS2 right here. And we have to go to Word2. So we type in Word2. Okay. And here we have Word2. Okay. Um, so now that this is connected to that, we're just right. Oops. Two. 23 okay um, and then this is obviously saved okay so this is connected to this and this one has automation and the CD ROM, CD ROM is in M so this should theoretically just work when I click on it and okay that's great It's definitely working. We installed, um, or we type an exit here, or control F9. And sorry if you couldn't see a lot of that, but it definitely worked. Um, and that's how you make automation set up. Uh, and you can do it with, uh, let's say we could even do the same exact thing with, let's take MRK. So let's get the CD MRK. And I'm gonna have to install it again. So maximum roadkill. And I'm gonna install it real quick. I'm gonna pause it while I install We'll just run it right here. Amount. Mount. We're in Warcraft. We're going to put MRK. Okay. Now we're going to go to the classic DOS box. No configuration file. And we're going to run all these things. Okay, we did this. Now we're installing it. Okay, it's getting installed. The installation is done. And now. You could just type in MRK and it should work. Okay, great. It works. Can't seem like I could skip this. So I'm gonna As you can see, it's working. I'm going to close it. And now we're going to copy. Okay, so we're, we're here. Warcraft 2, we're going to copy Warcraft 2. And we're going to just make a copy of that. And we're going to copy this. And we're just going to... Now I'll just call this MRK, and we're going to rename this MRK, and then, oops, my bad, we're, we're running Warcraft 2 again, and then we have to change these properties to MRK, and then we have to change this to, we want to change it to this. Um, the MRK right here. So we go. We have to change this to DOS2. It's already there. We already did that, and we just have to type in MRK. Okay. Now that should be automated. Let's try. It. All right. It works. Now, what if we take the CD out and we put it on unmount? And let's say we put, we mount it Starcraft instead, uh, Warcraft instead. So now we have Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness. Okay. Let's say we put that in. If I ran MRK now, it would just give me an error. Yeah, it's just not working. Nothing's happening. Um, I don't know if you can see, but nothing's happening. Okay. And the same thing goes for Warcraft. 
uh, if I ran Warcraft right now, it would work because the CD is an M. There we go. But if I were to take the CD out, let's say I just were to take the CD out of M drive right here, if I just take it out, I unmount it, and then try to run it again, I would get an error because the CD is not inside. And it does do that. It didn't work because I didn't have the CD in. So that's how we do it. Um, I hope that was helpful in like showing you how that works. Um, and I had to make another folder on my main gaming computer because my virtual machine died. So that is how DOSBox works. Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to tell you about DOSBox. Um, as far as, you know, how to make it. Um, there's also something called DOSBox Pure. Okay, and now I'm going to explain how to use DOSBox Pure. Now, RetroArch is pretty cool, and I'm going to explain more about that later. Um, a lot of people explain a lot about it, but um, I want to show you how DOSBox Pure works on that. So if we go to DOS, and let's say we choose, I think a good game to try it on is Dangerous Dave. So we click Dangerous Dave, and we reset core associations, and we run it, and ask us which DOS box you want to use, and if you click Pure, and run it like that. Now, of course, the CDs are going to be a little bit more complicated because it's running inside of this core over here, but it'll run Dangerous Dave DOS. Okay, very good. Um, there's something called saving, save state. So save state is F2, load state is F4. So let's see how that works. Okay, so now I'm going to press F2 and it's going to save the state into stop one. Okay, now I press F2. Oh no, that's saving it again. And now I press F4. It's going to bring me back to the last save state. So that's pretty cool if you ever want to, you know, scum save a game you'll be able to do it no problem. See, I'm always going back F2, F4. So pretty awesome. Uh, that's something cool that I, uh, I figured out that you could do. Uh, really great, and it's for sure much more that you could do with it. Um, disk options and save states, I'm sure that like, like this, the automatic one is number one, but you could change it to different ones. So like if you save something and then you want to save that state and go to another, another save state, you can. Well, it's pretty cool. So. Thanks for watching, and that's all for DOS for today. Thanks, have a great day.